were sitting here watching this presentation unfold and we wondered, hold on a second, free Mavericks, free iWork, oh, it looks like Apple's taking a few shots at Microsoft. What do you think about that? Maybe. And, uh, you know, and if they are, they're, they're really taking the shots where it hurts, uh, kind of at the core uh, Microsoft Office and, and operating system upgrades uh, revenue. But, uh, you know, if anything, it's just going to get Mavericks into the hands of a lot more people and it's going to get the the idea that these are devices that are great for productivity uh, into the minds of a lot more people. So it's great news as far as I'm concerned. So speed, Gene, let's talk about that. I mean, Apple clearly is proud with the rollout of, you know, the, the operating system for its phones, for its mobile devices. That seems to be part of what they're doing here too. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that they're, the, the pace is important. I think the fact that they've got a fresh lineup going into the fall is important too. I think that uh, ultimately, what you're getting to around Microsoft and what's going on there, it's quite a quite a shot at Microsoft. So overall, I think Apple pulled out some nice cards today. I mean, is there an argument that people who cover Microsoft, the company, should be pulling out the red pens or, or pulling out at least the pen to do some number crunching more so today because of what Apple did as opposed to what all today means for Apple? I think a longer term there is because I think this really just, and I don't know what the right word is, it, it makes... Uh, uh, Apple makes Microsoft now look kind of like they're being egregious or, or trying to take advantage of consumers by charging for these upgrades. So it's going to be really hard to move that needle, but it just made it look really like a bad situation for Microsoft. Phil, as far as your business goes, you want to be available on lots of platforms. Yep. And you are available on lots of platforms. Pretty much everything. But you sort of have to be, you know, placing strategic bets because all of those platforms require lots of man hours and work and that kind of thing. I mean, how much time do you guys spend thinking about that? Well, a, a lot. Uh, and we do support uh, pretty much every platform just because uh, once you get to a certain scale, it's not actually that hard. I mean, it's just uh, having de uh, dedicated designer and developer teams uh, trying to make the best experience in each platform is a lot of fun. Uh, but what Apple does, you know, every few months is they just raise the bar. Uh, they make everyone else have to be better in order to stay competitive. And so it makes us work a lot harder uh, across all platforms because they all improve. Uh, but it's ultimately what leads to the best user experience. I mean, your app shows people what they could potentially be doing at work yeah. that they haven't been able to do. Um, so when we talk about more app pads being sold into the enterprise, code word for businesses, Wall Street firms, banks, you know, who name, you know, that all plays together. Absolutely. I think what, what uh, Apple's really done over the, over the past several years is show that uh, modern knowledge workers are demanding the best possible experience at work. You know, the same quality experience at the office that they get at home. And so Apple products are just playing a bigger and bigger part of that. Uh, that makes us happy because we've always done great on the Apple platforms, but it makes all the other platforms have to become much higher quality uh, at work as well. Gene, how important is this story of developers? The latest numbers I think that Apple gave for us today tied to the iPad is there's something like 475,000 apps that are uh, iPad ready, uh, that they've paid out something like $13 billion to developers. How important is that in the grand scheme of things? Incrementally today, it's not much different than where it was six months ago, so it's just moving slowly in the right direction. But if you just take a step back and look at the big picture and look at some of those numbers, it's critically important because what that means is that Apple's got a place in the next decade around these devices. They didn't have that kind of support from developers in the 80s, and that was the problem. So it is critically important, but that change today really wasn't that significant. And, you know, Phil, going back to Phil, one thing that Tim Cook has talked about in the past uh, is how much, for example, web usage is taking place, or excuse me, web browsing is taking place on iPads. It was yeah. almost him saying, we, not, we may not sell the most devices in the world, but when people pick up a tablet, a lot of times they're doing most of the stuff that you would commonly do on an iPad. You're tracking how much activity, how much Evernote activity is taking place on all these platforms. Yeah. Does that make a difference? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, so we really believe in, in native apps on everything. We have full native apps on every device. And we were very early supporters of iPad. We were there on day one. It's kind of amazing to see how far it's come, but also how it's brought the rest of the industry with it. So from either of you, well, Gene, I'll go to you. You know, it, on, on the Microsoft side, what's Microsoft's next move? I mean, they were all, they've already been busy over the last 24 hours with a new service and teaming up with Nokia on their tablet, but what do you think? Oh, they, they just I feel bad because it's like the punchline of a joke at this point. Even though they come out with uh, some new tablets there with Nokia, no one really cares. 
And at the end of the day, what does Microsoft do? They're going to hold their ground. They're not going to give away uh, the OS upgrade, but I think consumers are going to get progressively more interested in getting it them for free. A bigger, bigger battle to watch for sure.